redonkulous. I mean, the, the whole hope springs eternal, the whole, the Fed's going to pivot. My stonks are going up. Yeah, baby. Mm. This is so dumb. I mean, this is dumb. Why should the Fed cut interest rates? Why? What is the rationale for cutting interest rates? The reason you cut interest rates is because an economy is slowing at a rapid pace and you need to stimulate the economy. Mm. All right. No one's talking about that. Everybody's talking about the no landing and everything's great and we're reaccelerating. And when Krugman says something, the opposite is going to happen. But he's like, oh, we've had, you know, epic prints of economic activity. On what planet are, are you talking about? This, it, it, no, we're not in depth of recession or depression, which, you know, a year and a half ago, there would have been many people, including myself even, that, that would have thought that was a, a potentiality. So, but we are not in this big expansion. I mean, yeah, the GDP came out positive instead of negative. But then we revised it down and probably gets revised down again. But it's, it's not bad, right? It's right at stall speed. You know, if we're if we're going to run at 2%, again, that's not bad, but it's not great. To, to claim that we have some, I can't remember the exact word he used, but it was literally hyperbolic. Like, this is the best economic data we've ever seen. Like, not, not even close. The difference between inflation and core inflation. Inflation excluding food and energy. And I used to make this joke, like, as long as you don't put gas in your car, heat or cool your house, send your kids to college, you know, go to the grocery store or, you know, use medical care. You're right. There's no inflation. But if you happen to do any of those other things, which is life, um, there's inflation, but it's not inflation. You and I have talked about this. It's currency devaluation. And that's why I think there's so much of this, you know, uh, three card Monty and, you know, you know, hide the whatever. Um, it's because people don't want to want you to pay attention to the reality. What Voorhees was talking about, what Robert Breedlove was talking about, what, well, actually Ayn, Ayn Rand was talking about, you know, decades ago is when men, and it is men, a small number of men control the issuance of the currency, they will destroy it. And that's exactly what's happening right before our eyes. And we are on the precipice, actually, I believe we actually are on the precipice of losing control. Like Zimbabwe, Venezuela, you know, uh, you know, Argentina is going through this, you know, pre-election cycle and there's this you know radical guy and he's you know yeah pretty good shot to win uh which would actually be a really good thing but there's a funny post someone said uh <laughs> i think it was bianco actually but it was bianco jim i love jimmy and he said this is an economic announcement argentina holds key rate at 118 percent 118 percent think about that we're whining because rates have gone back to five and a half six percent a hundred and eighteen percent that that is a broken economy and again from bad leadership and corruption and it's from now they actually had a woman because christina was involved but bad people doing bad stuff and if you are an average person in argentina and you didn't convert your pesos into Bitcoin, screwed. I mean, and Wences, I, I wish I could remember where he did the the, the, the original speech, but Wences Casares mm. does this amazing speech about his aha moment yeah. with Bitcoin because he watched his family lose everything three times. Not, not once, not twice, three times where inflation spiked to to quad digits and the government basically, you know, gets soup, people at the top get super rich and everybody else gets wiped out. It's what happened in Venezuela. It's what's happened in, I mean, Turkey. Erdogan's living in a palace and the people 
are having to pay really expensive prices for stuff to live. And so this is, this is a really big deal. It's a really big deal. And I think your point of, oh, we're going to just change the metrics and, and get everyone to believe that this thing that we told them it's good for them, inflation. Remember, they told us inflation is good for us. Again, on what planet is a policy that steals half your purchasing power over 30 years good for me? Just, just generally speaking, if you're going to take half my purchasing power away over time, why is that good for me? That's not good for me. What's good for me is giving me something that appreciates rather than defreciates, that increases in value as opposed to devalues. That would be good for me. We give half of what we earn to a centralized authority to do with it whatever they want with no accountability whatsoever. And then if they overspend, they just print more. If you and I overspend, we go to jail, right? You don't pay your bills. You get evicted from your house. You get arrested as, as a criminal. I mean, it's not quite that extreme, but there used to be a debtor's prison. Every transaction has the threat of being denied. Mm. Every single one. Now, and this is a really good point that Eric made that most of the time permission is granted, but it might not be. If you were in Cyprus, like mm -hmm. I, I talked this with bank, right? Put your money in the bank. It's not your money. It's their money. It's not yours. You have an IOU and that IOU is good 99.99% .99 of the time. But if you happen to be in Cyprus in 2012 and you woke up and went to the bank, you got 25 cents on the dollar. No explanation. No, oh, I'm sorry. No, no recourse, right? You can't, you can't argue that. IOU was canceled. And the same thing with, with our money, right? Is 246 years to print 10 trillion. And then two, we print 10 trillion, 244 years. And then in two, we print 10 trillion, which means that not great. the price of things that we need and this is, this is the insidious part, right? If you're at the top, you don't care because mm. you can afford it. If you're in the middle and the bottom, you care a lot because you got to pay your rent and you got to pay for food and you got to pay your taxes. Well, now, okay, I can trim going to Applebee's and then I won't be able to sing the song Fancy, which I, I it's kind of catchy. Then you can trim going to the movies and AMC stock can collapse. Today's video, Mark Yusko shared his worry about how the Federal Reserve might cause problems for our money and the economy. He thinks that the Fed's actions, like printing too much money and keeping interest rates very low, could lead to things getting more expensive and making investments risky. If he's right, it might mean tough times ahead for the economy. But not everyone agrees with him. And it's a reminder that what central banks do can affect our wallets and savings in a big way. If you found this video helpful, make sure you hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.